the complete history of Jeff's sexual conquest, volume one, and it tells the story of uh, everything between uh, kindergarten and senior year of high school. Therefore, it's a pretty short song. It's <laughs> longer than it should be, actually. Uh, and uh, all the names have not been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> kept the same to incriminate the guilty. <laughs> I started kindergarten one fine September. If I'd been in love before that, I just can't remember. There was a girl named Maggie that I liked for some reason. And right then I should have seen the road I'd be leaving. The road I'd be leaving. Because she told me that I could be her boy. If I lent her my Princess Leah toy, I'd pass it to her in the auditorium. And neither of them were ever again heard from. Second grade passed, so did the third. The next time I can remember doing something absurd is when I passed a valentine into the desk of the fourth grade girl that I liked best. That I liked best. And she was upset because she didn't know who it was from. And I admit that the whole thing was pretty dumb. And even though I knew that it wasn't right, I pinned it on this other kid that no one liked. <laughs> Fifth grade also passed slowly by. And the next year I found myself in junior high. If any of you have ever been there, then you know quite well. It's a fine time in life when everything goes straight to hell. I sure did. Because I fell for this chick, Michaela Weisner. If I saw her today, I probably wouldn't even recognize her. No matter how stupid the statement appears, I swear I thought about her all day long for two years. And this time I even had my chances. I took her to one of those seventh grade dances. And despite all the attractive styling moves in my hair, she was only going to meet her boyfriend there. And I went to the time at her birthday party playing truth or dare. I dared to kiss her, but I couldn't bear it. I liked her so much, but I didn't want to show it. Cause I thought the worst thing I could do would be to let her know it. And she sort of found out anyway. And she sort of even asked me out one day. I turned her down just because I couldn't deal with her finding out the way I feel. <laughs> It was in seventh grade that my straight A average went. And I gave up on ever becoming president. And I wanted to kill myself, and my folks put me in therapy. And I cut school all the time, and I stayed at home watching horror movies. Uh, I know. Here comes a question. Did you score any better as a high school freshman? No. I loved neither well nor wisely. I guess junior high had just traumatized me. I was such a fool. The biggest geek in school. Because before seventh grade, before that, at least academically, I had it made. And then after I let that whole nerd thing slide, I really had nothing to sustain my pride. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a crew with a bunch of other losers, cuz no one else would hang out with us. And some schmucks could only be loved by a mother, and we really even annoyed the hell out of each other. But I had a savior, and it happened when I was a sophomore. And I had never been stoned before. And it opened up my eyes, as it did. This was my chance to hang out with cooler kids. So, first up was Julie in my Spanish class. After chemistry tutoring, I said, hey, I've got some grass. And then suddenly I was getting high with four girls at a time. By the way, most of us are still friends to this day. So I can say, drugs saved my life. <laughs> much cooler even though 
Julie still wouldn't go with me to the Pink Floyd laser show. I guess just being stoned wasn't making girls gullible enough to like me. I had to wait until I met some chicks on LSD. <laughs> semester, junior year, suddenly into my life appeared this beautiful blue-eyed acid head named Kate. In the alley across the street from school, she looked great. And we hung out after school a couple times, and she was tripping and I was high. And the Friday after that was Valentine's. And we were alone in the alleyway and I kissed her. And then a couple days later, she wanted me to sleep over at her house. I didn't know anything at all about fooling around. But I went, and her room was dark and green. And I fingered her, and I did my best, and then she wanted to have sex. I didn't want my first time to be with the first girl that I kissed. So I said, I wanted my life to kind of unfold in a more subtle, romantic way, I guess. I said something subtle and romantic, like, I'll fuck you next time. <laughs> that was the end of our relationship. We were still friends, really, and uh, she lives on the West Coast now. And she has two kids with this other guy named Jeff. He collects guns or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't remember who else I kissed senior year, but I kissed a few. Even though I still wasn't totally sure what to do. Uh, I didn't have a date for senior prom. High school in a nutshell, four years gone. That's everything from kindergarten to senior year of high school. I was gonna write a volume too. I wrote this song a bunch of years ago. I was meant to write a volume too, and we got around to it. It's probably really for the best. <laughs> Sexual conquests, small 